What's up, everyone? This is James, one of your digital learning specialists with McAllen ISD. In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Outlook to create a Teams meeting link. And then once we've accessed that link, we're going to change some of the permissions to make it that meeting as secure as possible. So as you can see right now, I've logged into my Rapid Identity account. A quick way for me to get to Microsoft Office is if I go to the search bar, type in Office, it'll bring up a list of icons associated with Microsoft Office. I can click the first one, which says Office 365. It's gonna go ahead and prompt me to log in. So I've already logged in before, so my account is there. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my password. And after logging in, what this is gonna do is take me to office.com. So it's Office 365 where I have uh, the, all of my Microsoft Office 365 web apps available here on this left dashboard. The one we need is Outlook. So let's click on that. And that's going to take us into the web version of uh, Microsoft Outlook. Okay, we're looking for the calendar icon, which is down here on the bottom left. So I have the icon for mail, and this one is calendar. When I click on calendar, it opens up our calendar and we can see the events that have been uh, scheduled for us, meetings were attended, so on and so forth. So what we're looking to do is start a new event. So I can do that two ways. I can click up here and start a new event, or I can just select the day I want to add the meeting. I can double click on it, and that will create a new meeting event. And so I just need to give it some details. So we'll call this test meeting. And then since I'm not going, I'm going to be the only uh, person presenting and running the meeting, I don't need to invite anybody else. The only thing I did do need to do is make sure I double check the details of the meeting. So we've got the right day, the right time. And then what I want to do is add a Teams meeting link. Okay, so you see this little toggle switch right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on to make it blue. That lets me know I've turned it on. And then I'm ready to save this meeting event. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And as you can see down here, it says event created. Here's that event link that's there in the day. And also I'll get a little notification over here for August 26th, okay? So what I need to do to be able to access that link, I'm gonna go ahead and view it. So I'm gonna double click on the meeting again. And as you can see, it pulls up the meeting event right here, same day, same time. I can join that link right here. I can also join the link here. So right here, what I like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link. So if I open up, right click, I get the ability to copy the link address. And from there, I can paste it into Google Classroom, send an email, whatever form of communication I'm using that's digital, I can send it they can click on the link and be a part of the meeting. The other thing we can do is change some of the permissions by clicking right here on meeting options. So when we click on that, it's gonna bring us to a little dashboard that shows us the meeting uh, permission options for uh, that, that link. Okay, so very important permissions to turn on. So who can bypass the lobby? Um, if I'm working with students or working with people that only I want to admit, I'm going to go ahead and select only me. So that way I have to admit any person that enters the lobby. Okay. By default, I always let callers bypass the lobby that is turned off and toggled off. Then I can announce when callers join and leave. I can also turn that off. And then by turning on who can present, which is the last option, when I click this little drop down menu, these options appear. I get people in my organization, specific people, or only me. Now, when I click only me and I click save, what that does is it sets those permissions for that meeting link. So whoever else I send that meeting link to, whoever clicks on it, they will actually be attendees in the meeting. So we'll see that in just a second. I will be the only person that can present because I'm the organizer of the meeting. So let's take a look at what it looks like once we've clicked into the meeting and have somebody trying to join the meeting. Okay, now you can see I've already joined the test meeting and I already have one person waiting in the lobby. So if I recognize that person, I can go ahead and admit them. I can also click here to view the lobby. When I click view lobby, 
it pulls up the participant list. And as you can see, this person is waiting. They haven't been admitted. If I use this check box right here, that will let them into the meeting. And I can also remove them from the meeting if I don't recognize them with the X. So I recognize this person. I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark. And what that, that's going to do is once they, uh, it finishes processing, they will be allowed into the meeting. Okay, so now I can see we have two uh, participants in this meeting. We have myself and we have the guest. Now, uh, some really quick ways to kind of uh, keep the protocols in your meeting. Uh, right here where it says participants, I can manage the permissions, download an attendance list. I can also copy the joining information for this meeting and send it to, to other folks as well. So here as the, the organizer, when I come over here to organizer, over here to a guest, excuse me, when I click on that, I can actually pin their video. I can change their permission by making them presenter or I can remove them from the meeting altogether. While in this meeting, what I can do with the attendees is if I would like a student or another attendee to present, I can hover over their name in these three little ellipses. I can click on it and I can change their permissions. I can make them a presenter, I can pin them, or I can actually remove them from the meeting. Okay, the other option I have here too is we can invite other participants here if it's someone specific to maybe your classroom, a co-teacher, special ed teacher, someone that's helping with inclusion or, or, or a paraprofessional, you can invite them here as well. When my meeting is finished and I'm ready to end the meeting, I can remove all the participants one by one if I would like to, but a quicker, faster, and more efficient option is to come up here to where it says leave the meeting. If I click this drop down arrow menu, I can leave the meeting myself individually, but the best option is to select end the meeting. What that will do is, is when I end this meeting, everyone that's participating in the meeting as an attendee will be, the, it'll, it will end the meeting for them as well. And so if they try to join back, they'll actually have to be added back to the lobby for somebody to admit them. So that's a great rule of practice to go ahead and end the meeting for all. That will end the meeting and that will make sure that no one will be able to rejoin the meeting once you have left. All right, thanks for joining us for this little look at Microsoft Teams and creating a link with Outlook. Have a great day.